What's up, brothers and sisters in Christ? I hope you guys are having such a blessed day today. And may the joy of the Lord be our strength in these lasted days that we're in uh, before the soon return of our blessed hope, our King, our Savior, our Redeemer. I really want to share with you guys this dream that I had three days ago. Um, it was such a vivid dream. And I know the Lord wants me to share this in a loving warning uh, for those who aren't in Christ yet that this is serious. Jesus is coming back and God isn't going to play games. You know, God is loving you so much that he is knocking on the door of your heart every single day uh, so that we can be led to the salvation plan of the creator, the Messiah, the savior of, of the whole world. If you know that Christ died for you and that we can be saved from a life of hopelessness and destruction that we bring upon ourselves through our own selfish desires. Listen, there's hope. There's hope in Christ alone, not ourselves, not anybody else, but Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. This dream, I have many dreams. I'm a dreamer. Every single night I have a dream, but I don't share all the dreams that I have. I share the ones that the Spirit of God leads me to share, and this one is about um, a flood. A flood. See, we know that the Word says in the days of Noah there was a flood, a flood that destroyed the whole earth. God promised through this covenant sign of the rainbow that God would never destroy the earth again by a flood, by water. Next, he's going to destroy the earth by fire. See, God is a God who keeps his promise. He's the God of the impossible, but he's a God of justice and he's holy. If you don't know that God is holy, today is the day to, for you to know that our God is holy. We have scripture that tells us over and over and over how holy our God is. What does holy mean? It means to be set apart and it means to be different. It means to be just a holy, just, perfect, perfect God. Perfection that we don't even understand, but we need to understand in these last days so that we can get ready. This dream that I had, it was um, so vivid. And again, uh, I, I, I want to, to, to just give a disclaimer. This isn't something that I believe, oh, it's going to happen, right? But it could happen in the sense of earthquakes. Um, the signs in the end times is earthquakes in various places. And we know that earthquakes in the ocean cause tsunamis. Now, could there be a flood? Sure. Could there be huge waves that come? Sure. But I'm going to share it with you right now before I get into it. Um, just this verse, and then I'm going to share the dream. Psalm 25, 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. In them, he will show his covenant. God wants to share the secrets of his kingdom. God wants to share you the secrets of his salvation plan. God wants to show you things that not everybody gets to know, but it's with them that fear him. Them that fear his name, that he is able to destroy thy mortal body and cast thy soul into hell. He is able to save your soul from, a, from hell. He's able to do all things. He, able, he is able to do all things and he's capable, but he's not willing that anybody should perish. But there are secrets with the Lord. But God's not gonna hide anything from me. Sure he does. He hides things and he conceals things. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the heart of a king to search it out. That's Proverbs 25 verse two. But God is wanting you to get ready to be prepared for what's coming. Because who knows what's going to come, guys? Who knows what's going to, a uh, God is going to allow to happen in this world as the, so much, the world is so much in fear of what's going to happen to their body, fear what, that's going to happen, uh, to their family members, but, or their loved ones. But we shouldn't fear what's going to happen to the body. We should fear the Lord and know and get ready. So now I'm going to get into the dream. I was, um, in this house. I don't know. It wasn't my house, but I knew it was my house at the time. Uh, but it didn't look like where I live now, but it was in this house and I was just sitting in the living room And all I know is I knew something big was about to happen. I didn't know what I just knew something was about to happen I just felt it And then all of a sudden I turn I stand up and I turn around and I see in the window huge tsunami waves just about to hit the house and me about to just get smashed and caved in water flowing through and eventually it happened Pfft, water just came through the house and I hear screams in the distance from my neighbors and people all around me I just hear the screams and it's terrifying and then I get taken under and I'm holding my breath and the waves are just consuming me and people are just getting tossed the whole house is getting destroyed and I thought I was gonna die but for some reason I knew God you're gonna help me get through this so I knew he was getting me through this and I was under the water, couldn't breathe, got th 
thrown out the window of the house and then all of a sudden I see and I get a breath of fresh air I, um, and I see in the distance through the waves everyone just getting consumed by this water <laughs> and it, it and I was just trying to you know get as much air as I could I was going under in and out and this is how I'm describing it I know I move a lot but this is how it was and it was just it finally got into a still point after what it seemed hours honestly in this dream but it was quickened and then the waves subsided and uh it came to nighttime and the the, the wave subsided and then i went to this warehouse where a whole bunch of people were gathering together to survive shelter food people confused people in chaos but there was there was people in chaos and there were some people who were seriously trying to figure out what just happened how did this happen it was such a normal day why in the world that people lost family members people died but there were few people who were being saved and then all of a sudden it became morning and another wave hit and did the same exact thing and destroyed more and more and more. And then by nighttime, it stopped. And then we knew, OK, is it going to happen during the daytime? Is this flood, is this wave going to crash during daytime? We need to prepare even more. So we started creating what rafts for the people who survived the second wave. And then all of a sudden, the third day hit. And again, the waves came. This happened for three days. And then I woke up in the dream. For three days, during the daytime, the floods came. Nighttime, there was rest. And I share this to say, will that happen? I don't know. Okay, I'm not God. I don't know. But what I'm getting from this is, guys, for Jesus Christ was risen from the, uh, from the dead after he was pierced on the cross three days. And then he rose again. And now we know, like in the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Noah was a man who preached righteousness 120 years. He would warn people of the judgment of God and the flood to come. And they thought he was crazy. They would mock. They would scoff him. They would think you're too religious. You're too crazy. God's not going to do that. I'm sure they said God is a loving God. All this sort of stuff. But the waters came and it flooded. And think about it. This was a reality that happened somewhat 4,000, 6,000 years ago. God destroyed the earth with flood because he's not joking around he's not playing god is not willing anyone to perish but at the end of the day there is a time where god's judgment must prevail and this dream just relates to are you going to get in the ark of safety what is the ark of safety now what are, in the day because we know that the earth is going to be destroyed with a consuming fire god's oven is preparing and it is turning on heat and it is preparing for a bunch of people to get what they deserve but god made a way out God is a loving God. He made a way out through his son. Get in the ark of safety, which is Jesus Christ. Yahweh. The king of kings, the Alpha and the Omega. Have you repented and had a change of mind and considered not the world, but considered Christ and said, you know what? I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to pick up my cross and I'm going to follow him. That was the dream, guys. That, that was the dream, the floods coming. And it was a warning, I believe, for me to come on here and share with you guys that we don't have a lot of time. Time is ticking. Time is precious. Today is the day of salvation is what Paul says when he's preaching. Because guess what? Tomorrow's not guaranteed. And sure, that may sound cliche. You may have hear that, heard that a lot. But I'm not here to, to, to please people with new wise sayings. I'm here to preach the word of the Lord. I'm not here to preach myself. I'm here to preach the word of God. That Christ died according to the scriptures for our sins. And not just for yours, but for all the whole world. And that everybody is doomed without Jesus Christ. There's a lot of walking dead. There's a lot of people who are walking on this earth, living and breathing, yet they are spiritually condemned to hell because they have not yet repented and had their faith put in Christ Jesus. So now it ties back to what I said right before the dream, the scripture of Proverbs, or not Proverbs, sorry. Psalms 25 verse 14, which said, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And them he will reveal his covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is a mutual agreement upon something. If you do this, then God will do this, this, that, and the other. Christ died for our sins. If you put your faith in him, you will be saved from an eternal damnation that we all deserve. For we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But if you have not yet understood the secrets of the Lord and fear God, you won't understand the secrets of the Lord. And then you won't in turn understand and God will not reveal the covenant of God, the holy, holy covenant of God that he has placed before you, before the whole world. Because guess what? We're in a time where, man, if you have not heard the words of Jesus Christ, you're living under a rock because guess what? God has made, has revealed to many, many people, Jesus Christ. We're coming to that point where technology has increased. Okay. We're coming to that point where people are going to and fro, just as the Bible says, 
just as the Bible prophesied. But are you in Christ? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you have faith in God? Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But are you diligently seeking him? Yes, it's hard. It's hard to seek God in times of trouble. But in times of trouble is when we're most in need of God. Even in good times, we should seek the Lord. Because guess what? Good times don't last forever. Unless we're in our glorified state and in heaven with the Lord and we made it. By the grace of God alone, right? Grace of God. What is grace of God? Grace of God is mercy. It is empowerment to live holy. Why would God command us to do something that we're not able to do, which is be ye holy for I am holy. Why would God give us a command if he were, if we were not able to fulfill it by the power of God, not by, by, by our own strength. So all these people who think, oh, I don't have to live holy. I don't have to walk straight, the straight and narrow. It's a perverted gospel that leads many to hellfire for all of eternity because they were too lazy to figure out and seek the Lord Almighty God. They were pleasuring they, they, ha they found pleasure in the world rather than pleasure in God. And isn't that what it says in the scriptures too? That they were pleasure, that they, Lord, give me it. You guys know it, comment in it, the, the description of, if you know what I'm about to say. That they found pleasure in the world more than pleasures of God, right? That they, they, they worship the, the creation rather than the creator. That's what I was saying. They worship the things of the world rather than the one who made the world. Okay, we know that the world, yeah, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe, right? That Satan is deceiving many. But we also know that the world is God's. It says the, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and all that dwell therein. God owns everything. God is the owner. He's the operator. He's the sovereign God. He sits on the throne. But is he on the throne of your heart? Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to share this dream of warning of that, that time is ticking. TikTok time is up. You know how much I've been persecuted on TikTok by so many people, the LGBT community, and even so-called professing Christians who think I'm just fear-mongering. Whatever you want to call it. I'm a servant in need of Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm in need of him every day because I'm a man who fallen short of the glory of God. But by, I hold on daily by the grace of God on the Son of Man, the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He is the one true living Son of God. The father of all creations loved us enough to, enough to send his only son. How much more you give your life to him. It's very simple. It's love. But love has trials. Love is hard. But guess what? God loves you and he's faithful even when we're faithless. So today, put your faith in him. Today, you can be saved. Today, you can be reconciled and with the father of all creation. Because guess what? Sin separates us. But God and his blood covers us. God bless you all. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to strive, continue to push. God is coming soon, and I'm, I'm here to preach the word, not here to tickle your ears. I'm here to preach the word, and whether it tickles your ears or not, I don't know. God is the one who does it, because some plant, some water, God gets the increase. At the end of the day, I'm preaching, I'm planting, and I'm watering those of his sheep. I'm, I'm, not, his, I'm not the shepherd. God is the only good shepherd. I'm not a good shepherd. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd of his flock, and guess what? His sheep, listen, they hear his voice, and they follow him. If you love me, obey me. He who abides in me keeps my commandments. God bless you all. I love you very deeply. Um, pray for this ministry. Pray for your loved ones. Pray, just pray, because prayer is powerful. Letting our requests be known unto him, for he is more than capable to do more than we could even understand. God bless you all in Jesus' name.